This is Channel 2 News. Coverage you can count on. Jimmy was a, a champion for what was right. And he got, he got killed because he was doing what he thought was right. The man found dead in his northwest Reno home yesterday is being remembered tonight by his friend, speaking exclusively to Channel 2 News about his connection to a deadly hostage situation that followed. Crime Beat tops Channel 2 News at 5 o'clock. Good evening, everyone. I'm Kristen Remington. Wendy is off tonight. Thank you for being with us. The man's body was found yesterday morning at his home in northwest Reno. Police say the suspect, identified as Mark Constantino, also kidnapped his estranged wife, Debbie, from the home and took her to an apartment complex in Sparks and held her hostage. Eventually, SWAT teams entered the apartment and found both Mark and Debbie dead inside. You may remember Mark and Debbie Constantino were featured on Channel 2 News back in 2007 and again in 2010. They were both paranormal investigators, especially specializing in EVP or electronic voice phenomena or ghost voices on tape. We have much more on them and their troubled past to come. But first, what about the man who was killed in Northwest Reno? Landon Miller spoke with a friend and went inside the house where that murder took place. Now, we want to warn you, some of the content of this story is pretty graphic. And it's a story you'll see only on Channel 2. The garage door was open when Victor dropped off his friend at the Escalera Way house she shared with two other people. It was 6.15 Tuesday morning, and he heard her scream. That's when he went to see what was wrong. I came right here. I saw Jimmy laying there dead in the hallway. Victor approached his lifeless friend. And I looked at Jimmy and I, I knew he was shot in the head. His next thought was, where was Debbie Costantino, the third resident of the house? I walked out and got 911. Victor agreed to talk to us if we didn't show his face and if we changed his voice. Jimmy died and no one's talking about Jimmy. He wants the memory of his friend, James Anderson, to be the focus. I don't give two about Mark. Jimmy was the nicest guy you could, you could ever, ever met. Jimmy agreed to let Debbie live here with him. She and Mark were in the early stages of getting a divorce. This house here on Daybreak Drive belonged to Mark and Debbie Constantino. The police responded here frequently, but the most serious incident happened on the night of August 7th. The police had been there so many times over the years. Kathy Carrico moved here 15 years ago, the same time as the Constantinos. She says she's heard the couple threatening to kill each other many times in the past. That is a time to call the police because those threats are very real. Tuesday, those threats became reality, not only for Debbie, but for Jimmy too. His glasses are still lying on his bed. His shirt and belt are still placed on a chair. As for Victor, he chooses to remember his friend by not how he died, but by how he lived. The picture of him with food in his hand. That's what Jimmy would do. You come, come over, hey, you hungry? Boop. I'm going to feed you. And that memory is something that will always last. Covering the story, Landon Miller, Channel 2 News. According to court documents, Debbie and Mark Constantino both had a history of domestic violence. In March of this year, Debbie was arrested at a home in North Reno. She and Mark were fighting over money, police say, when she scratched him. It escalated and she allegedly sliced his arm with a kitchen knife. She was charged with domestic violence and battery with a deadly weapon, but never had her day in court. Then just six weeks ago, documents show Mark, along with their daughter, Raquel, pulled Debbie out of a car by the neck and dragged her inside a home. Court documents accuse Raquel and Mark of beating Debbie, of breaking her nose and causing bleeding. Records say Mark then strangled her, causing her to nearly pass out. Raquel is charged with kidnapping, domestic battery, battery and vehicle burglary. Mark was charged with kidnapping, domestic battery by strangulation and domestic battery. The court documents we obtained show kidnapping is usually a no bail charge. But in this case, both Mark and Raquel were granted bail by a local judge, so they were allowed to be released on bond. Both, though, were ordered to stay away from Debbie Constantino. And yesterday's incident is a stark reminder of how serious domestic violence can be. Not only can it end in tragedy, but it also presents dangers to the officers that respond to a dispute. Paul Nelson spoke with law enforcement and joins us now live in the newsroom. Paul, these types of situations offer some unique challenges, don't they? 
They do, Chris, and domestic disputes are some of the most common types of calls officers go on. They're also some of the most unpredictable. After all, they're usually entering an already violent situation. Ten eight with right there, go on that. Law enforcement can be a very unpredictable job. Just today, what would have been a simple warning for a panhandler that's him. ended up being much more. This worked out good. I came to a report of a panhandler. When I ran him, he ended up having a felony warrant. The unknown variables are what makes some situations dangerous, especially a domestic disturbance. Deputy Bob Motamanpour has seen that many times in his 20 years with the Carson City Sheriff's Office. We are walking in a situation that we don't know what these people have done. We don't know anything about their lives. We don't know anything about the dynamics. We don't know the kind of weapons. Motamanpour says officers do all they can to ease the tension in domestic situations, but that can be a stiff challenge. We don't have the crystal ball. We can't solve people's problems that has been brewing for years in a 10 minute call on a visit to their house. The Violence Policy Center reports that Nevada ranks fifth in the country when it comes to women murdered by men. 92% are killed by someone they know. Law enforcement officials say alcohol is usually a factor in domestic calls, and Nevada's high rank could be a result of the Silver State's unique characteristics. You can look over at the uh, addictions, gambling addictions, alcohol addictions, and the realization that folks are out there 24 hours a day. Tuesday's incident in Sparks is one of those cases that appears to have festered over time. And the dangers that cops face became a reality in Carson City last month when Deputy Carl Howell was killed while responding to a domestic disturbance. The only reason that we're going there is that there is some sort of violence, whether it be um, a verbal argument or a physical argument. So we're walking into a violent scenario to begin with. Furlong says financial issues can also result in domestic disturbances, and that's why calls sometimes spike at the first of the month when bills are due. If you are a victim or an aggressor of domestic abuse, there are services available. Just head to our website, ktvn.com. We have a link set up for you. Covering Crime Beat live in the newsroom, Paul Nelson, Channel 2 News. Paul, thank you. And be sure to stay with Channel 2 News as this story develops.